I have to admit, I'm a bit late to the party when it comes to giving X Defiant a go. The game was launched on PC as an Ubisoft Connect exclusive, which is hardly a game store I use frequently, so that's going to be my excuse. I hope however that I will be redeemed by testing this new 2024 launch on hardware that is not only 12 years older than the game, but also well below the stated minimum requirements. For now we'll be focusing on the GPU side of things, where the developers have the GTX 1050 Ti and the RX 5500 XT for the minimum specs. So, let me introduce you to the Arnon family. Ta -da -da -dum. The role of Lurch is being played by the R9 to 90X, just as big and powerful. Gomez is being played by the R9 to 80, itself just another name for the HD 7970. And Uncle Fester is being portrayed by the R9 to 70, formerly known as HD 7870. I tested the cards at 1080 and 720 resolutions using the same Z230 workstation as the test system. You know, the same i7 4770 is on equivalent and 32GB of DDR3 running at 1600MHz in dual channel. One thing to be noted before we go into the results. The video was captured at 720 resolution and this will make sense later in the conclusions. I believe by now you'd be interested in the gaming results, so we start off with 1080 resolution and the lowest possible settings. Except the render scale, that one was manually pushed 100%. The Hawaii based card managed to average the highest FPS out of the bunch, to no one's surprise. 123 FPS for the R9 to 90X is much better than what I expected, and the 1% loss of about 60 FPS is... Um, some equivalent to music to my ears. At almost 100 watts less, the R9 to 80 averaged 79 FPS and had the 1% loss at 56 FPS. Despite that percentile low being under 60 FPS, this is close enough to that 60 to make a good gaming experience. Keep in mind that the game was run with the DirectX 11 API, so the difference in performance between the R9 to 90X and the Gomez R9 to 80 could very well be explained by the power consumption delta alone. As for the R9 to 17, it averaged 57 FPS and had the 1% lows in the high 30s. While definitely far from the best game experience, it does provide a bit of hope for how the card could operate at 720 resolution, or at a render scale of about 70%. And speaking of 720, the results on the screen have quite a bit of information, although not all of it is obvious at the first look. Again, the R9 to 90X leads the pack with 131 FPS for the average and 67 FPS for the 1% lows. This might seem great, but compared to the 1080 results, it's merely 8 FPS more for the average and 3 FPS more for the 1% lows. Um, pop quiz, what could cause that behavior? The R9 to 80 averaged 107 FPS and had the 1% lows of 53. This is not 60 plus FPS all of the time, to quote one of my favorite YouTubers, but 50 plus FPS is still quite fine. I could play... no, let me correct that. I would play the game like that. Last of the bunch, the R9 to 70, averaged 102 FPS and the 1% lows went above 60 FPS. That doesn't mean that the R9 to 70 is just as good as the R9 to 80. The 1080 results clearly say otherwise. This could very well be due to the R9 to 70 playing the game on a smaller map. The lamest excuse would be to say that the reason I play the game so badly is because of the hardware. But all of these legacy Radeons can play it at an acceptable level of performance, albeit at different resolutions. So if the gameplay is bad, well, I can't really blame the cards. The minimum requirements are actually quite correct. I expected the R9 to 80 to be a decent substitute performance-wise for the GTX 1050 Ti and the card delivered. But Uncle Fester was the pleasant surprise. While sluggish at 1080 resolution, the R9 to 70 provided a good experience at 720, and that's nothing to scoff at in its price range. Anyway, this is it for this video. Thanks for watching, I hope it helped, and I'll see you for...